Good morning, afternoon, and evening. I'm Calista Kirk, and welcome to the Carrying the Banner podcast, where we discuss the variety of ways that musicals can be used to educate and raise awareness throughout the community. Let's jump right in. Today, we are going to be talking about historical education, as in how musicals can be used to learn about important events in world history. The three productions that I've chosen to focus on are Les Miserables by Claude Michel Schoenberg and Alain Boubiel, Come From Away by Irene Sankoff and David Hine, and Hamilton, an American Musical by Lin-Manuel Miranda. As always, a playlist of the music discussed will be linked to this episode for your listening pleasure. Les Miserables, or Les Mis, first debuted in Paris in 1980 and then opened in the West End in 1985. This production still continues today, making it West End's longest-running show ever. This production was nominated for three Lawrence Oliver Awards, several Audience Choice Awards in 2012 and 2014, and when it debuted for the first time in America on Broadway in 1987, it was nominated for 10 Tony Awards and 7 Drama Desk Awards. It went on to be revived in various locations at various times, including Toronto, Australia, and then back on Broadway, as well as many tours in many different countries. I get that that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. But there was also a movie adaptation of the musical that premiered in 2012 with a star-studded cast of actors and vocalists including Hugh Jackman, Anne Hathaway, and Aaron Tivitt. This revived the musical even more than before with enthusiasm and significant critical acclaim. This musical does not feature any excessive explicit language, but it does, as a disclaimer, show some significant violence to further legitimize the struggles of the public during the time that the musical was set. The violence is not graphic, seeing as it is a live stage performance, but as a disclaimer, there are still numerous significant deaths. Les Miserables, or Les Mis, is based off a novel written by Victor Hugo in 1862. Both the musical and the novel are set in revolutionary France, when the public was revolting against the unfair oppression as enforced by a strict monarchy. The protagonist is a French peasant, Jean Valjean. The musical starts with him being released from his 19 years in jail, which he was sentenced for stealing a loaf of bread for his starving nephew. As he is put on parole, eventually breaking it, he meets a cast of characters from various stages of life, including Fantine, a single mother who is forced into prostitution to support her daughter Cosette, who Jean Valjean later takes into his care. The rest of the musical is a tangled mess of death, betrayal, and rebellion that sews itself into the historical French Revolutionary period. There are various songs and scenes that directly input the audience into the revolution, especially at the end of Act 1 and beginning of Act 2, where the story of the 1832 Paris Uprising, or June Rebellion, is narrated by the full ensemble's chance for justice. In the song Do You Hear the People Sing, the Act 2 opener, it directly emphasizes the struggles of the public as they sing in unison the following lyrics. I will not be singing these lyrics because I cannot sing, but I will be saying them passionately. They sing, Do You Hear the People Sing? singing the songs of angry men, it is the music of the people who will not be slaves again. Emphasis on the knot, which is sharply and sternly enunciated by 35 ensemble members of various ages, sizes, and nationalities. Though the lyrics are reflecting the strains of the anti-monarchist uprising, it also reflects the strains for freedom from oppression that echo into today. Some historians argue that Les Mis is not 100% historically accurate, seeing as the time period of which it is set in does not precisely align to the timeline of the French Revolution, but it nevertheless represents the struggles of the people at this time and encompasses the essence of the anti-monarchist movement, how it tore families apart, corrupted relationships, killed many, and changed history. Les Mis performs this with award-winning beauty and emotion. In my opinion, this musical is for learners and teachers looking for more personal insight into the anti-monarchist rebellions that took place in the 19th century. It would be successful for people taking or teaching a world history or European history course so they can further immerse themselves into the curriculum. It would also be useful for readers of Victor Hugo's Les Mis to gain a better understanding of the novel they are reading, or for English classes that are reading texts from France's revolutionary period. As far as listening to or seeing this musical, at the time of this podcast airing in February of 2019, Les Mis currently has productions touring in the U.S., U.K., and Ireland, as well as two established productions in the West End and Mexico. There's also the opportunity to listen to the original West End cast recording, original Broadway cast recording, or the 2012 film soundtrack on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Music. I encourage you to explore this musical in all its forms, and I highly recommend it. All right, moving on to Come From Away. Come From Away first debuted on Broadway in 2017 and was nominated for seven Tony Awards, nine Drama Desk Awards, seven Outer Critics Circle Awards, and the Grammy for Best Musical Theater Album. It more recently has begun its U.S. tour, began production for an opening in West End, as well as planning for an Australian tour. 
As a warning, this show does have a mild amount of explicit language, but nothing further. The cussing is only used to build character profiles and realistic representation of the events and the characters. Come From Away is the story of September 11th, 2001, but not told in the way you'd expect. This musical puts a spotlight on the town of Gander, Newfoundland, an island just above the U.S.-Canada border, and it highlights the residents' experience as 38 planes were rerouted to land and the town's population doubled. Come From Away is based on interviews, memoirs, and real-life accounts of people who either helped the so-called plain people feel welcome in a town they did not know, and the Come From Aways, the people who were put in the desolate town with little connection to the outside world while a disaster was taking place. This musical does a brilliant job of factually showcasing the people that lived in this experience. The cast takes on real-life names and character traits of those evolved. Each actor and actress plays many characters throughout the performance, putting on jackets, hats, sunglasses, changing their dialect, etc., depending on who they are portraying. With a diverse cast of 12 people, all different sizes, races, religious backgrounds, and racial identities, it makes the story realistic and truthful to the actual event. The events of September 11th and the days following it are seen through the perspectives of people from all different backgrounds and origins, including but not limited to a gay couple, a mother whose son is working as a firefighter in New York City at the time, a Muslim chef who is facing fierce discrimination on the ground, and a female pilot who are all rerouted to Gander. Along with these, we see the mayor, an animal shelter worker, and a school teacher who are all working on the ground in Gander to make sure everyone gets what they want and what they need for their stay. An example of these people's lives being told powerfully and truthfully in the musical is through the song Me in the Sky, where Beverly Bass tells her story. Bass, the first female pilot for American Airlines, describes the love for flying that has followed her throughout her life, from her first solo flight transporting a dead body to Arkansas for a mortician, to becoming a flight attendant and harassed by male pilots for trying too hard, being chastised by female flight attendants for thinking she was better than them, until now, when she is a successful and recognized pilot. Bass comments on how she sees her favorite thing, Flight in the Sky, being ripped of its joy with the attacks on 9-11. This song gives insight into one of the plain people's reactions to the event, showing how its impact is unanimously emotional. It also teaches listeners and the audience members about the trailblazing Beverly Bass, the first female American captain in history. Come From Away is a story relating to the events of 9-11, but not directly about it. For the people who lived through this time, Come From Away offers new insight and a sense of community and acceptance out of the disaster that occurred. For people who have only heard about it secondhand or do not know anything about those series of days, this musical teaches them about how 9-11 impacted people around the world no matter who they were or where they came from. It informs them about the impact of kindness and how lights shine even in the darkest of times through friendship, love, and the celebration of things that make us all human. At the time of this podcast being recorded, Come From Away is currently on Broadway in the Schoenfeld Theater. There's also another cast that is touring the United States. The original Broadway cast recording is on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube for those that cannot see the performance firsthand but still want to experience the wonderful story as recorded by the Tony-nominated cast. I invite you all to listen to it, share it with friends who experienced the event and marvel in its realism and natural beauty together, or share it with children who would benefit from its lessons both factually and its powerful themes. Chances are you've heard of this next one. Hamilton, an American musical, first debuted on Broadway in 2015 and quickly became the most Tony-nominated production in history, with an astounding 16 nominations. It went on to win countless other awards both for the original Broadway production and cast recording and the production that opened in West End in 2018. Maybe it's starting to sound familiar. In addition to the stationary theaters in New York City, Chicago, and West End, there are currently three productions touring in the U.S., As a warning, this show does have a moderate amount of explicit language and mentions Alexander Hamilton's affair with mildly suggestive and sexual undertones. Hamilton is a rap musical telling the 18th century rags-to-riches story of Alexander Hamilton, yes, the founding father. If you have not heard of Hamilton, that may alarm you or sound boring, but if you have heard of it, and I believe most people have, you know it works perfectly. This musical includes the historical landmarks of the Revolutionary War, the First Presidential Cabinet, and Constitutional Convention, as well as the personal life of Hamilton, his marriage to Eliza Schuyler, the death of his son, and his own death. It is a story that practically shouldn't be successful as a musical, but thanks to Lin-Manuel Miranda's genius writing, is both extremely entertaining and extremely factual. 
With catchy rhythms and lyrics, Hamilton gets stuck in your head quite easily, simultaneously getting the technicalities of the French assistance in the Revolution, the Anti-Federalist versus Federalist debate, and George Washington's resignation from the presidency stuck in your head. One example of something you can learn from or teach by listening to Hamilton is the secretive political compromise of James Madison and Thomas Jefferson with Alexander Hamilton. Little was known about this agreement because no one was in the room where the decision was made, aside from these three men, until they emerged, moving the U.S. Capitol to the south and voting yes to Hamilton's new financial plan in court. The song where this debrief is The Room Where It Happens, and gives the perspective of an outsider, Aaron Burr. He expresses his disdain for himself and the public being left out of important decisions like this, and its choice being left for the elite. Just through this jazzy and extravagant song, the Compromise of 1790 is explained simply and successfully. Hamilton is a great musical to be used in U.S. history or U.S. government classes to study the period of the Revolution or teach it to students effectively and enjoyably. It's also great for casual listening because of its beautiful orchestrations, lyrics, and production. So as you casually listen, you are casually retaining valuable information. You come out of the performance, if you see it live, with a vast new understanding of American history as enforced by a diverse cast that doesn't quite replicate the rich white men who really dominated the building of America. Instead, it represents the people throughout history who may have been forgotten in the process. It is the America that we live in today of various races, ethnicities, sexualities, gender orientations, sizes, etc. If you listen to the original Broadway cast recording, a slightly more realistic option seeing how immense popularity has driven up ticket prices, you end up putting these songs on repeat, furthering the exposure to the valuable historical knowledge. At the time of this episode's airing, you will have the chance to see Hamilton on any of its three tours at the Richard Rogers Theater in NYC, at the CIBC Theater in Chicago, or at the Victoria Palace Theater in London. The original Broadway cast recording is also on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube for your listening pleasure. And with that, we are done with episode one of the Carrying the Banner podcast. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Calista Kirk, and I hope this makes you want to listen to some of these productions. I'll see you in episode two, where we're discussing coming of age in musicals. This episode was written and recorded by me, Calista Kirk, and produced by Steve Baldwin and myself. It is part of the Figure 8 podcast network. That's figure with an eight, so you can find us there. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at PodcastCTB, on Instagram at CarryingTheBannerPod, or on Facebook by searching Carrying the Banner Podcast. We are happy to hear your feedback, and that is also where the episode playlist will be linked for you with a highlight reel from each musical mentioned in the episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.